Good morning, bird brains, out here in the garage with the uh, Fat Bob. But I want to show you guys something. We got some, uh, we got some parts in, guys. Let's get into it. That is right, guys. The parts are in. Well, some. A very, a very small portion of the parts are in for the Fat Bob build series. So I know I mentioned on a previous video that I was not going to be starting this build until um, I think after summer, like that September, October time frame, and that still holds to be true. Uh, but that was more for basically anything that's going to put the bike down, as in not rideable for you know a week or two. So what you saw there in the garage was uh, a, a care package from Bunking, a returning sponsor to the channel. Uh, their crash bar saved my ass on the Dyna, so I'm kind of uh, loyal to them. But they were nice enough to send out the crash bar for the Fat Bomb, as well as a shock extender and one of their license plate relocation brackets. The shock extender should give us about an inch and three quarters lift in the rear. People ask, oh, why are you jacking the, the Fat Bomb up? It's already high enough. I, I'm a tall guy. I like my bikes to be high. I like the way they handle when they're jacked up. Plus a little extra ground clearance for going out and doing stupid shit off road like I uh, have been doing recently on this bike. Uh, it's always gonna be, you know, it's always gonna be better. But also another reason I like to, or that I'm going to be raising up the rear on this particular bike is that the angle of the shocks are, I mean, it, as you can see, comes up about right here. I want to get that a little bit further away from me, get my hands a little bit further uh, over the, the triple tree. God, this place is still flooded. No, I'm not riding through on this bike. Hell no. Look at that. It's up to the bumper of that truck. Nope. I know I kind of touched on that during the Dyna build that getting those bars a little bit further ahead uh, over the triple tree affects the handling quite a bit in a, in a good way, in my opinion, but that's also something that we're going to be doing for, for this build. Now the shock extension uh, turned out to be a little bit bigger of a project than I initially thought. Uh, I didn't read the description at all. I thought it was just kind of like a, like a lift block kind of how you see for the Dinas and the Sportsters. But this is actually replaces a part of the shock itself. So the shock has to be taken off, taken apart, and then compressed in order to be disassembled. And then that shock extension actually replaces one of those parts on the shock itself. I've, I've compressed shocks on cars before to do like uh, spring changes and things like that, but I've never done one on a bike before. So I might be implying the help of Super Dave just to make sure I don't kill myself because that is a uh, quite dangerous dangerous uh, process if you don't know what you're doing. At least on a car it is. Like I said, I don't know how the motorcycle springs work. But the crash bar should be a very simple install as well as the uh, license plate relocation. The only thing I don't know about that is how the light kind of feeds back there, but we'll figure it out when we come to that. But another fun thing about this build series is that I'm going to be doing how-tos for every part on the bike. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is releasing the build series episode as one single episode, but then each part that I put on during that episode will have its own how-to video released on the same day. That way, if you want to see how that piece was put on in a little bit more detail, I will be doing step-by-step how-tos for each individual part. Uh, I've got a lot of compliments on my how-tos. They're not necessarily my favorite videos to do, uh, primarily just because they take a lot of work. They take a lot of uh, planning. They take a lot of post work as far as like the narration, things like that. But people really seem to enjoy uh, how detailed I go into it and they seem to perform quite quite well. So in order to help the channel out, I think I'm going to go ahead and commit to doing a how-to for every single product. And then last but certainly not least, if you saw in the beginning clip, we have handlebars in. Now, I did. I know I mentioned in the uh, first episode of the build series information video thing that we were doing custom built bars. Well, that is the very first iteration of the custom Bikenberg signature bars. That's right, guys. We have teamed up with 4130 Chassis Works to produce a completely custom Bike and Bird signature bar. So this is going to be completely fit to how I like my wrist, how I like the angles, how I like the pullback. And that's just the very first prototype that you saw there. So 
uh, probably pretty soon after this, I'm gonna be doing a video of just the very first initial test fit. I'm not gonna be running any wires or cables or anything like that. If I have the shock extension done by the time I do that, I'll just go ahead and put them on. If not, I will put it up on a, uh, um, a board up on the back. That way the forks are at the correct angle. That way I know if the pullback needs to be adjusted at all. So I'll, I'll probably try to get the uh, shock extension done before uh, that first test fit just to make sure that everything is good to go because really guys an inch can make all the difference and I'm not saying that to try to be funny or, <laughs> or dirty or anything but an inch really can make a difference that's what she said <laughs> So basically after I do that, I will be uh, making any necessary adjustments or changes with 4130 Chassis Works and they will be making the changes and sending the bars back to me. So maybe we'll get it right on the first time. Maybe we'll send it back and forth 15 times. We, we don't really know. But then after that is set up, the plan is to get uh, a bulk order of those made in various sizes, probably do like a 11, 13 and 15 inches. And these will fit a very wide variety of bikes. And then they will be for sale on getlower.com so get lowered actually will be hosting all of our our sales and inventory so it'll have my uh my little logo really small down the corner somewhere and uh pretty excited guys I'm, i've never done this process before so what another just learning opportunity for the channel you're probably asking yourself uh why are you why are you going to the dealership well in case you didn't see the uh episode where i dropped the battle donkey off the battle donkey uh came in to get the throttle replaced so i think it's see here this is nice and smooth it was not moving nice and smooth it kind of jumps it's because it's sticking and the fat bob is up for its 1k it's actually uh 357 miles over the 1k but like i've mentioned in previous videos i come here to alamo city harley davidson uh, they're one of my sponsors here and they do all my K services for free. So I will be dropping this one off to get the 1K and we'll be picking up the Battle Donkey. Also, don't forget, you can get 25% off any Rockform product, either a motorcycle mount, phone cases, uh, mount for your car, mount for your workbench. 25% off everything on the site with code BNB25. All right, let's go get the Battle Donkey. In case you're wondering why my bike is uh, so filthy after just being serviced, I specifically asked them not to wash this because uh, because of the wrap. If you use uh, any any uh, soap that has a certain chemical in it, I believe it's silicone or something else or something or other, I pretty much have to look it up every single time I order soap. Uh, it can mess up the wrap, so I asked them not to wash it. So they're not uh, being inconsiderate or just giving me a dirty bike. They're doing what I asked them to do. Welcome back, Battle Donkey. Ah, nice new throttle. No sticking anymore. That is night and day difference, guys. This bike gets a uh, takes a little while to get used to after riding the Fat Bot for so long. You can see now, nice and smooth. So yeah, guys, just dropped off the Chubby Shuttle to get the 1K service done. He said it'll be about a week. They're really backed up right now. This is this is peak service time for a lot of people right now. That we're pretty much, I wouldn't say smack dab in the middle of riding season, but uh, people that took too long to get their bikes in, the the procrastinators, you might say, this is when they are in peak effect. If you're asking yourself, well, why did you wait so long to get your bike in? Short answer to that is I'm just terrible at uh, getting things done. <laughs> the reason being is that I was unsure if that bike had had the 1K service or not. Uh, since I bought it, it had like 890 or just under 900 miles on it. So I wasn't sure if uh, San Jacinto Harley had serviced it prior to selling it. So I needed to call them and I hate calling people and I put it off and put it off and put it off and finally got that taken care of and called them and asked them if it had been serviced and they said no it had not. So. That brings us pretty much to today where uh, I have an opportunity 
opportunity to drop it off which of course it was just super convenient that i had this bike because i dropped this bike off during an event that miss mrs bird had gone to so i hitched a ride back with her and then to pick up this one i just rode the fat bob down there and basically swapped them out also i don't know if i pointed this out last time but i i specifically took these out before I dropped it off because I didn't want them to either A, damage them or B, lose them. So if you're wondering why that's still empty, it's that's on purpose. I have them safe and sound in my garage. It's kind of a hassle to go pick up bikes uh, just because, you know, you have to have a ride to, to get there and back. I could probably take an Uber. It'd probably be like a $6 Uber ride since I only live like three miles from the dealership. But I don't like spending money I don't have to because I'm cheap like that. Speaking of money, guys, I'll just throw this in to end this video in case you're lucky enough to make it to this point but uh, I've been dipping my toes into uh, investing in stocks and ETFs and all that kind of stuff and I've I've done enough research where I can kind of somewhat know what I'm talking about but I downloaded an app called Robinhood this is not a, a sponsored advertisement at all but I found out I've, I've downloaded pretty much every app I could and Robinhood is the closest one that I can find and is most recommended by real-time stock traders so if that is something that interests you I recommend going and downloading the Robinhood app. I'll also include a link down in the description that you can use to get a free stock. And that's that's just free money, guys. That's You can go in and download the app, use my code. You'll get a free stock right off the bat. You've got like a 1 in 200 chance, I think they said, of like the stock being over $200. So essentially, you have a 1 in 200 chance of winning $200. And you don't have to put money into the account or anything like that to get that. You download the app, use that link, and that stock is yours. You can sell it, hold on to it, let it grow you name it but uh, that's pretty much taken over my life the last <laughs> couple weeks is just trying to learn as much as I can about that and uh, try to make some money I guess in case you don't know what I do for a profession I'm a business risk analyst so I analyze money data all day long I build charts and graphs and analysis and all that kind of stuff so the stock market seemed like a, a no-brainer for me to try to dip my toes into and try to learn how everything works and and so far I'm doing pretty shitty at it to be honest <laughs> I think it's just because I'm trying to it's it's hard to turn off my business risk mind and turn it into more of a investor focused mind and reading the charts is just completely different than you know my standard financial charts anyways you can you can check it out if you want if not it's cool it's it's whatever anyways guys i hope you are excited to see the chubby shuttle up on the lift i know i sure am i am chomping at the bit guys trust me seeing a stock bike sit there in the garage and just basically sit there and get ridden and not get work done <laughs> i know that sounds weird because i know a lot of people like that's that's their life they ride a stock bike and they're totally cool with it but it's really really upsetting me <laughs> you have no idea how bad i want to just go out there and just rip the whole thing apart in in one afternoon but i'm trying to do it right i'm trying to be patient i'm trying to give you guys the best content possible and that requires just a little bit of patience wow that that handguard is is way out there so i hope you guys can uh be a little bit more patient i should have some build style episodes to you fairly soon but other than that that is going to do it for today's episode if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already go ahead and punch that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time